Now, a Monty Python special. A quite personal interview on Pope Gregory the Seventh. And now to you, Mr. Viewer. Good evening, and thank you, Mr. Narrator. Now, tonight on 2021, we have a very special guest today. His name, in fact, is Hildebrand, formerly known as Pope Gregory V. Now, hold on a second, Mr. Viewer. It's Pope Gregory the Seventh. The VII are Roman numerals. Well, that's what I said. Pope Gregory V. Anyway, how are you doing today? The seventh. The seventh, Mr. Viewer. But anyway, it is going pretty good. So, Pope Gregory the Seventh, the Seventh, could you give me a brief summary of your life? Don't make it too long, though. You can't be that interesting. Just one seventh, Mr. Viewer, and please don't make me say it again. Pope Gregory the Seventh. How about I just call you Greg? Fine, if you'd like to be informal. Heimlich. Or I could call you Pope Gregory the Seventh. Anyway, your life story, please. Well, okay then. Well, I was born near Sawana in Tuscany, Italy, in about 1020. I wasn't exactly sure when exactly I was born. Now, wait, wait. Hang on a minute. You don't know exactly when you were born? How could you have a bloody birthday? Well, we would just celebrate all year. Anyway, I didn't really do anything until I became Pope Gregory VII, following Pope Alexander II. So, Gregory VII served under Alexander II for a time? Yes, I did. Anyway, in my time as being a Pope in the Vatican, I did serve under Alexander II, and I was known to be a reformer in Christianity. A reformer, eh? What exactly did you reform in your day? Well, all these priests and people around me are going against the codes we set in the beginning. Priests are going marrying and having children left and right. There are people that are going into the religious offices of the church just by using their wealth. And then the kings, the lords, they are appointing people to these religious offices. That's my job. So you're against these practices then? It's enough to drive a pope mad. Oh, and the worst of them was Henry the Fourth. I don't really want to talk about him. Oh, but you must. The contract you signed to do this interview requires you to answer any question I ask you. To hell with the contract. I can't even begin to understand where I would begin with this guy. He's so horrible. Obviously, he's an enemy of yours. A freaking pigeon could have figured that one out. Anyway, well, I was... I'm sorry, Gregory, but I'm going to have to stop you there. We're going to have to have a brief word from all sponsors right now. Thank you. Are you thirsty for the Lord, or are you just thirsty? Either way, you should try some of our Jesus juice. It's the wine that Pope Gregory the Seventh uses in the Vatican for his community. Don't you, Greg? Thanks, Mr. Wine Guy. Jesus Juice is a grace. It strengthens your spirits in times of need and cleanses you of all unrighteousness. Your sins will be gone. Just a small sip of Jesus Juice can be the difference between salvation and damnation. You can't purchase Jesus Juice if you're not a priest or a pope. He uses it for the right causes. Others will abuse it. Priests and pope know what to do with it. Jesus Juice is not for everyone. Those who are satanic, atheists, or may become atheists. Do not drink Jesus Juice. Drink Jesus Juice at your local cathedral. Please drink responsibly. Well then, wasn't that enlightening? Now, let's see here. You were just about to tell me about your encounters with King Henry Iv? Okay. I didn't want to tell you, but your contract convinced me otherwise. I do prefer to keep all four of my limbs. Anyway, King Henry the Fourth. Iv. Oh, whatever. You're not worth arguing with. Anyway, me and Henry, we, we had a feud. You see, I tried to get him unseated as king because I banned lay investiture. And what is that, may I ask? 
Well, that's where a lord, in this case a king, appoints the religious officials in the church. That should be my job. I should be doing that. Well, anyway, after that little feud that we had, it's been going on. After a few apologies were made, and then the feud came back on, and eventually I ordered him unseated as king. That kind of pissed him off. He sounds vicious. Oh yes, he was. I was deposed as pope, and then forced into exile in Salerno, Italy. There I lived out the rest of my life until May 25th, 1085, where I died. Wait, you died? Figuratively speaking, anyway. Wait, what? I really don't feel like explaining it right now. It all started, it's a really long story. It all started with this crazy old kook man who kept screaming about 1.21 gigawatts. What are gigawatts anyway? You'd understand if you lived in today's culture. Now we're going to have to take another commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. So, we will go into this brief word from another one of our sponsors, Time Magazine. Pope Gregory VII is running to be Time Magazine's Man of the Period. He was one of the best reformers of his time and known to be one of the biggest reformers in Christian history. I'm known as one of the biggest reformers in Christian history! He lived in Rome. Italy, being the Pope, he tried to change the church back to the old way of doing things. I tried to change the church into going into the old way of doing things. You shouldn't vote for that evil man, Pope Clement III. He unseated Pope Gregory VII from his papacy, being the anti-Pope. He's the anti-Pope. Therefore, you should vote for Pope Gregory VII to be Time Magazine's Man of the Period. He tried to make life how it used to be in the Christian church, clean, pure, and serene. Vote for him, now. Mr. Narrator, you really do have quite the character. Now I'm sorry, but this is all the time we have for today. Pope Gregory VII, thank you for coming out here. Why thank you, Mr. Viewer. I never decline a chance to share my life story. I want to thank Pope Alexander II for teaching me how to be a Pope. Also, I want to thank all my priestly friends in the Vatican. You know those Friday night poker nights, those are a lot of fun. And then, I especially want to thank you, Colin Phillips. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. Because you really helped me get this and you gave me inspiration for this video. Thank you.